Hello everyone and welcome back to computer vision lecture series. This is lecture 10 part 1. In this lecture we are going to talk about structured light. Uh, until now in the past weeks we have seen how we can calculate depth from stereo vision and specifically using um, dense motion, motion estimation techniques like optical flow and uh, stereo correspondences we could find the differences between two images or sequence of images and localize every pixel in 3D real world and the location of this pixel in 3D real world essentially gives us the depth of the uh, pixel. Um, so what is structured light? Uh, until now uh, we have seen um, in stereo vision uh, the image acquisition techniques it is called passive image acquisition technique why because in this case we are just capturing images we have a setup of uh, stereo cameras uh, which are separated by a fixed baseline we have two different images or more images and then we reconstruct or recreate the original scene from the uh, from the two images or multiple images so in binocular stereo vision or in dense motion estimation what we are doing is using multiple set of uh, cameras to reconstruct the 3d depths or 3d locations of, of each and every pixel point so the ascent uh, the reconstruction reconstructed part of the image is gives us the uh, depth also of every pixel in the image this is called passive image acquisition in this case uh, the correspondences sometimes fail when the there is uh, when the feature distinctiveness is not very high or we are not able to find nice uh, correspondences so there are issues as well from uh, for finding for during finding stereo correspondences uh, we have seen some of those issues mainly it was uh, about uh, this uh, missing distinctive uh, missing distinctive features for example where when there is a plane surface it's not easy to find very nice feature locations or uh, feature correspondences in different images and this is these are the places where the uh, correspondences fail and uh, yeah and and therefore there are some missing parts here which we are not able to recreate because of uh, those missing correspondences but in general uh, it gives us a good depth map of the original image so today we are going to look into what is active image acquisition in active image acquisition what we do is we uh, insert an additional source of light or ad additional additional patterns for example on the in this left image you see this pattern of light which is uh, projected onto this uh, sculpture and we capture the geometry of this sculpture using the information of uh, this pattern what we do is when we project this light on this sculpture we already know the geometry of this uh, light pattern so we are in control of creating the kind of pattern that we want to project as well as the location of this projector and therefore using this same geometry or the same setup as stereo correspondence we can cre uh, recreate or we can reconstruct the shape of this object by this method so what we are doing is uh, repurposing our stereo correspondence algorithms by additional input like these patterns and using the using it to create a better more dense uh, correspondence or more robust correspondences uh, to be precise uh, in the middle of the image there is a nice uh, uh, example of this setup where uh, in the 2000s uh, the sculpture of david by michael angelo was uh, given access to uh, some scientists from us and they were able to recreate uh, a 3d structure of uh, this sculpture using this uh, structured light uh, algorithm similarly on the right hand side we can see a nice uh, close up of the similar to david's uh, face here we can see a close up of the sculpture as well where we where the technique is able to recreate even the textures or even the small um, gro groves in the image 
or of the sculpture and this technique is quite powerful in this sense that it gives us a much more robust and much more controlled or constrained uh, stereo correspondence and we are able to create recreate the depth or the structure of the image uh, structure of the object in the real world through capturing images by using the same setup so what are the main differences between active and uh, passive image acquisition techniques we have already seen in passive image acquisition we just capture few pictures and find correspondences between different uh, distinctive features and it is difficult because sometimes correspondences cannot be found for example when the mm, surfaces are featureless uh, a good example is a white wall whereas in case of active image acquisition there are two ways one in which we just replace our um, sorry the first one is the one in which we add additional projector or a source of light that generates some pattern uh, on the already um, set up. so there is already a stereo setup and we and it is not working sometimes or we need additional information to find better correspondences in that case we just add one projector whose uh, which generates a pattern for uh, this pattern is controlled and therefore we are able to find uh, better correspondences so that is first uh, way of uh, having uh, an active image acquisition technique another one is in which we uh, replace the one of the cameras of this correspond uh, stereo setup uh, entirely and how we do this and how uh, this is uh, beneficial we will see in the next few slides but uh, it is important to know that uh, depending on the uh, kind of task that you have uh, one setup can be used over the other so traditionally i would say that in the first image acquisition active image acquisition technique is used when the current uh, stereo setup is not working or you need a better more robust correspondences uh, so what you do is essentially uh, put a source of light and it could be anything so you what you want to really do is create um, a pattern on the uh, real world and um, for for uh, the pattern uh, you uh, create in the real world you know the geometry and therefore you are adding an additional pattern generator which could be a projector or a laser beam whereas in case of the second image active image acquisition technique you just replace one camera by a projector and that's it and then you use those two uh, this two setup for finding uh, correspondences this is these are some examples of active image acquisition called uh, laser scanning in which uh, the source of light is a laser and the laser projects a single beam or a single ray of light uh, so it could be uh, a single point or it could be a line as seen on this face uh, of this sculpture David from the previous slides so in this CEO in this uh, structured light uh, apparatus the camera is moved around uh, or, or up and down in this case of David to capture the uh, face geometry of uh, the sculpture whereas in this case the camera is rotated around the face of the person uh, to create the uh, to create the structure of the um, uh, to, to, to create the structure or the geometry of the face of the person okay. okay in another one another source of light is could be a structured light where you um, project predefined geometry or predefined uh, light so, uh, structures for example horizontal line with one black and white um, lines uh, it could be vertical lines which are uh, displaced with uh, uh, different uh, colors whereas you can also have this horizontal uh, colored lights and sometimes these lights are also moving up and down and uh, this gives a better control in the sense that you can uh, you know the speed with which this line will move and accordingly you can track different corresponding correspondences across images uh, and then recreate the depth of this or the geometry of this sculpture so the differences between active and passive acquisition is basically in um, so the properties and the differences we will see here uh, we already know in passive it's the stereo we can calculate uh, motion as well motion estimation as well can be done 
the data collection is easy just taking some pictures by two cameras or even one camera displaced by a certain baseline if you already know um, the baseline it's a non intrusive intrusive setup in the sense that in the real world you're not projecting additional information or additional pattern to capture and it can produce nice dense depth maps because um, depending on the kind of features that are present in your image if there, if there are highly high distinctive features it will be easier to generate uh, nice dense, dense depth maps uh, as we have seen before uh, but it's so uh, again uh, the same argument goes here that if the f the surface or the image is or, or the scene is featureless it would be uh, a very big challenge for such passive systems to acquire uh, uh, correspondences uh, in contrast in active image acquisition what we see is that uh, we get a more robust correspondence so even for featureless surfaces you will be able to create uh, correspondences because you will know you can project light sources there certain pattern of those light sources and then you can capture the location of those light sources in your uh, camera you can recover data even at featureless parts as i said before it's high accuracy is possible in this case uh, but the depth uh, uh, so high accuracy means that you will be able to localize the points exactly where they are in much more with much more confidence whereas uh, the depth maps could be sparser the reason is that when you see at these patterns these patterns are not so highly resolved and it is possible that the camera that you are using can have a higher resolution and in general has a higher resolution than these patterns that you're projecting and because of this it is not uh, possible to generate uh, denser depth maps but that is the uh, that is the uh, that is the po uh, part point of it that the uh, patterns that you generate cannot have higher frequencies than your uh, capture and image capturing device for uh, practical reasons uh, so such cameras active image acquisitions are very popular in industrial setups because in industry you have conveyor belts which are already moving so what you you don't have to really move your um, patterns you can just fix your uh, projector at one point and when the object moves along the conveyor belt it is essentially scanning the whole object and using this information the there is another camera which we will see uh, uh, um, in the next slides an example and this camera is able to capture this uh, pattern and recreate the shapes or depths of these objects on the conveyor belts. Uh, of course, it requires more complex hardware, uh, data hardware, because there is an additional projector or a light source. Uh, it is intrusive and uh, illum this illumination can alter scene appearance. So if you are uh, really focused on finding the exact depth maps, uh, it will it might be a bit challenging because when you project some patterns over the image it can distort or um, change the appearance of the uh, appearance of the scene and also this kind of setup has a limited range of depth so uh, imagine your projectors in uh, on the facade of your uh, living room and you can uh, so those projectors are quite good you can easily project them uh, inside your homes or in a um, closed environments in a smaller uh, surface areas of the walls but imagine the same projectors being projected on the face of a very big church or in face of a very big building at night also it is quite possible but uh, not uh, but the high uh, the accuracies will decrease and the depth maps will be much more sparser and therefore its um, usefulness will diminish uh, imagine uh, for example if it is daylight then the projector will not be able to project the these patterns on these uh, buildings in the day daylight and it will not be easy to locate these patterns by the camera as well so the complexity of uh, this task will increase uh, due to this kind of uh, situations so, and therefore it has a limited range of depth okay so as we have so said in the beginning as well and um, uh, I will repeat that the geometry is similar for both the setups for structured light as well as stereo correspond uh, stereo um, correspondence as well. So what in traditional stereo what we do is we have these two um, cameras where we look at the same uh, 
a point in the scene in the real world scene uh, can, and we generate two different images i and j so every point in i can be located in a corresponding scan line in the image j uh, if these two cameras are stereo pairs so uh, this is very simple method in this tra traditional um, stereo setup where you have this point in the image and a uh, from of the real world point here and you locate the corresponding point in the uh, second image pair or the uh, stereo image pair along the scan line so you will have to compare and it's a it's a very com um, tough task and you have seen how difficult it could get if the feature uh, if the surfaces are featureless or there are uh, obstructions or there are occlusions and things like that so it will get more challenging if there are if you are not able to find this correspondences um, and usually we do this with uh, minimization techniques we have seen lucas canade we, ha we have seen optical in, in optical flow as well how these techniques can be used and most of them are minimization techniques trying to find the best match along the scan line however um yeah so basically uh, you can also go from the image j to i to find the corresponding image um, um uh, so to find the corresponding image pairs uh, sorry corresponding feature pairs so what you hear, you see is from the source of from the real uh, scene there is a ray of light that intersects this uh, camera at this point and another ray of the light from the same point intersects this camera at this point and it kind of forms a triangulation and using this triangulation technique we are able to solve the stereo correspondence problem and uh, similar geometry is there for uh, structured light triangulation in structured light also we are using similar uh, so, so the geometry remains the same uh, we add information by using either uh, a strip of light or a laser or some light source which generates um, some structure or uh, unique pattern of light and um, in this case what we do is let's say uh, if this source of light is projecting um, yellow color or a yellow point on the scene and this yellow point is tracked along the scan line in the by the camera uh, at the location of uh, j and similarly if you take um, another light uh, green red pink uh, so on and so forth you can find this correspondences across um, using the second camera setup and second camera using the same uh, stereo correspondence uh, setup however the problem here is um, that that i could say that there are millions of uh, such color points and then this task becomes uh, challenging so as we have seen before both the passive and active uh, acquisition techniques have the same underlying uh, geometry so the principle of ray triangulation is similar except in active setup the one of the cameras is replaced by uh, a light source and that light source is able to generate some pattern on the real world scene which is captured by the second camera uh, by the remaining camera here uh, so in active acquisition as we have seen it's a very simple approach given a projector here and a camera here and we know the relative positions of both of these the source is or the projector is able to generate a light pattern and the camera is able to capture the light pattern along the scan line using the similar stereo setup so when you turn on the source maybe let's say you turn on one pixel color and uh, let's say in this case it is yellow the camera on the uh, is able to capture this location of this yellow from the scene and similarly you start uh, throwing or shooting different uh, pixel colors but let's say there are multiple or millions of colors being projected by this source and all of these colors will be captured by uh, this camera and the original scene depth or uh, correspondences will be established as you can imagine because there are a lot of uh, such image uh, pixels being matched it is this technique can be very slow because you have to iterate over all of those pixels 
and you have to also include the frequency or the sampling rate of your source let's say normally it is 60 hertz and 60 hertz multiplied by 1 million colors if you are assuming that you are using 1 million different colors then it is a very tough task and therefore it is uh, sorry it's a very uh, complex task and therefore it is very slow but is there a simpler way of finding such correspondences are there better techniques or not so the basic concept as we have seen until now is uh, the triangulation idea can be applied to this uh, in this setup that uses a projector here for example in this case it's a laser projector or a beam projector and a camera instead of uh, using two different cameras you are just fixing one camera the laser will project the light source on the real world scene and the camera will capture this beam and uh, corresponding underlying geometry so uh, from uh, the object surfaces uh, will be illuminated by this light source uh, through uh, the known pattern of the light in this case of laser it's a single beam of light that spans across the image uh, this structure of light is the main source of light and the camera will be able to capture that and depending on the shape of the object the pat pattern is distorted if you move uh, this beam of light along the um, along the side or along one uh, direction to capture different shapes of the object so uh, in this setup we already know the geometry of the light pattern we also know the relative position of the light as well as the camera and using this information we can use our uh, original or previous stereo correspondence setup to solve the same problem so in an enlarged form we can see here that the laser is here or uh, the light source which uh, makes one beam of light uh, or um, which uh, kind of projects one light uh, one line or one beam along the um, uh, along the surfaces of these objects and this camera is able to capture the surface uh, shapes uh, so in this uh, image we can see that uh, it's able to record that it's a cube smaller cube a semi uh, sphere or a hemisphere and then there is a bigger larger cube uh, 